In this episode, I'm going to talk about the DOS program Animator, also known as Animator Pro, or as I knew it, Autodesk Animator. Animator is a 2D cell animation tool that was released in August of 1989. It allowed users to create frame-by-frame -frame animations on a canvas of 320 by 200 VGA resolution with 256 colors. The features and rich color palette was considered groundbreaking at the time. The software won a PC Magazine's 6th Annual Technical Excellence Award for Graphics. A key feature of Animator was tweening, which is a process of animation that involves generating intermediate frames, called in-betweens, between two key frames. The intended result is to create the illusion of movement by smoothly transitioning one image into another. Another feature was palette-based effects like color cycling to create the illusion of movement. Animator's combination of 20 tools multiplied by 20 inks, 3D optics, unparalleled palette handling, custom fonts, and many other useful features put it many years ahead of better known animation tools of the time. Jim Kent created Animator, which got its roots from the Atari ST program called Cyberpaint, which got its roots from the Amiga program Aegis Animator. Animator eventually evolved into Animator Pro for filmmaker Gary Yost for the Intel 286 chipset running DOS. A Pro version was released in July of 1991 and could generate animations at any resolution but also had a premium price tag of 800 US dollars. Animator was then licensed to Autodesk who published the software as Autodesk Animator and that sold for 300 US dollars. Video game developers used Animator for intros and other animated sequences in their games. Some examples include Formula One Grand Prix released in 1991 by Microprose and Cannon Fodder, released in 1993 by Virgin Interactive. Canadian filmmaker James Cameron saw Animator and was convinced at that point that CGI could be used to create characters for his next film, Terminator 2, Judgment Day. So my 14-year-old self was given a copy of Autodesk Animator back in 1993 by my high school principal, and until that point I had only explored drawing static art on a computer. Now I could push things to the next level with animation. Here are a few sample animations I did as a teenager between 1993 and 1995. Phantom Fighter was my first attempt to make a more complex animation. In, it had uh, several assets, several scenes, story. It was, it was definitely uh, much more challenging uh, than what I had previously attempted. The ship was actually a scale model that I had built, so I used that as, as a, a basis to draw the aircraft carrier. The F-4 Phantom was just one of my favorite planes, so I, I knew it quite well and was able to draw one quite easily. The Cold War. This was my second attempt at a lengthy animation. It was based off of the film The Hunt for October, which I had seen during my summer vacation. You have two main characters, the Typhoon-class submarine uh, Red October and the um, American uh, USS Dallas attack submarine. It is just a simple story of the at attack submarine hunting the Red October, firing a torpedo, and sinking it. The Shuttle The shuttle 
is composed of several scenes. It's probably one of my most complex animations I did up to date, and is probably my also my favorite one. As you can see, we're going through every step of the launch procedure, and now we're entering the re-entry phase. Star Wars. Having seen the uh, original trilogy um, during my summer vacation again, I was very um, motivated to do a Star Wars themed animation. A simple story involving an X-Wing, several TIE Fighters, the X-Wing trying to eliminate the Star Destroyer, getting damaged returning to its home base, getting repairs, and returning to finish the job. Over a period of two to three years, I created several animations, but eventually want to explore 3D as it was all the rage during the 1990s. Animator was not designed for 3D creation unless you were skilled enough to draw in 3D, which was not my case. I became more and more interested in computer programming and eventually dropped animating. However, the skills I learned using Animator were not lost and became useful when developing various games that I would go on to create. 